I'm going to read this morning a familiar text uh, for you, a part of the story. We're going to read part of the story, and I'm going to tell you um, some more about the story. From 1 Samuel chapter 4 to verse 20. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife, Penaniah, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why, why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was greatly distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall neither drink wine nor intoxicant, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went on, her, uh, on to her quarters and ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel. For she said, I have asked him of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts to you, O Lord, that all that we have and all that we are will belong to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just imagine for a moment, just for a moment, that you cannot have a purpose in your life. That what your being is defined by, you cannot have. Whether it be a family, whether it be a career, whatever it is, you can't have it. You cannot have a purpose in your life. What happens? What do you do? Well, here's the thing. Hannah could not fulfill her purpose in life because she could not have a child. There are instances in the Bible where miraculous births take place, and Hannah is the second one. Sarah, Abraham's wife, was barren and had a child in her old age. Hannah had a, had a child, had children actually later on. And then um, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, had a miraculous <coughs> uh, conception. But imagine that you can't do 
what fulfills your role in the community, what defines yourself. Imagine your self-worth. Imagine your pain. Imagine your sorrow at not being able to be what you were called to be. That's what happened to Hannah. And she went to the temple to pray. She went in and as she knelt to pray, her mouth began to move. She was praying so hard and her spirit was so deep and so moved that her lips were moving. Eli, the priest, thought that she was drunk. And so he told her, you need to get out of here and put away your wine. And She said, I'm, I'm not drunk. I haven't been drinking. I'm just praying with all my might that God would let me fulfill my purpose in life. That God would allow me to be the person that he has called me to be. That he calls others to be and I have not been a part of. I, have not able, I am not able to be a part of the community, of the family, because I am childless. Eli said to her, go in peace, and may God grant your petition. So they left. Hannah had sworn that if she had a child, that she would take the child and she would dedicate the child to the Lord and give the child, a boy child, to the Lord as his servant. She said that he would be a Nazarite, which was kind of... uh, I don't know, on her part, it, it, it was kind of uh, bad because a Nazarite couldn't drink wine, couldn't eat grapes, um, had to stay away from anything unclean, and didn't cut his hair or beard. So by the time Samuel was about 20, 25 years old, he looked like Phil Robinson from Duck Dynasty. At least that's what I imagined him looking like. She gave him to the Lord. She took him and left him with Eli. The Lord opened her womb and she had Samuel. And she gave him to Eli to serve in the temple. And Eli used him And Samuel grew up in the temple, and every year his mother would bring him a a, a change of clothes. And you imagine going a year with the same things, ladies, and not being able to go shopping because there's no shops. The only thing you can do is go to the market, buy chicken or something like that. But Samuel lived with Eli. And he began to grow in his, <clears throat> in his faith with Eli. He began to grow and become a person of God. You know, sometimes we have problems understanding why things happen in our life. Why there is chaos. Why, why there is pain. Why there are tears. Why it, there is suffering. We wonder about that in our lives and we we try to make sense of it and sometimes it just seems that, that it makes no sense at all. But God has a plan for our lives. If we open ourselves to the will of God, then God can use us for the purpose that He has for us. I remember when when uh, my mother left, there was a lot of pain and sadness and depression that, 
that was there with me. And it was tough. And I looked back one day when I was about 30 years old. I looked back and I realized, yes, it was bad. Yes, that was a bad thing to have happen. Yes, I wish my life had turned out another way. I wish that my life had been all good and all sunshine and roses. But it didn't turn out that way. But God had a purpose for that. I understand when people are rejected. I understand when people are hurting. I understand when people are depressed because of the situation that they're in. What the world calls bad, God blesses and uses us. I realized that I had to take responsibility for my own life. That whatever happened to me after that point in time was not my mother's fault. It was my responsibility. I grew a lot that year just by understanding that the bad things that happened are outweighed, were outweighed by the good life that God had given me. The blessing that God had given me was my family. The best years of my life, from the time I got, well, from the time I met Ellen to the time we got married and had children, they fulfilled my life, made me whole. It was tough at times. But what was intended for bad has become good because I understand. I don't have to like it. I don't have to understand it. All I have to do is give it over to God and let God take care of it. Let it be in the past. Let it be over with. I had to forgive my mother. And that was hard to do even up to the time of her death. It was difficult. But forgiveness is what made things better. It was hard to do. It's easier to ask forgiveness, I think, than it is to forgive someone who has wronged us. But it is necessary because God forgave us for our sins, made us new creatures, made us new beings in Him. We are thankful to God for all that He has given us. And when we live in God's grace and not the chaos of the world, and in that chaos, when we pray to God to help us, God is there with us. Don't feel like you're alone in your struggle. Don't feel like you have been deserted. People around you may have forgotten you. People around you may have deserted you and gone other places. But God is there with you all the time. God is there to be your help, to be your comfort to alleviate your pain. The song says, you, you plead my cause. That's what forgiveness and grace are all about. The purpose of life was fulfilled for Hannah when she was able to have children and God blessed her. And I think she treasured those children even more because she had such a hard time having children. Now, here's, here's what I don't understand. This is, this is a side, and, and I, this is just something I don't understand. How do you 
go to your husband and say, um, listen, uh, when, when this child gets to be about four or five years old, I'm taking him to the temple to give him to uh, God to use as a servant. How do you say that to, you, to the father of your child? And what does the father say? Because sons are needed around the, around the, the place. They're needed to plow the field, sow the seeds. They're needed to keep the sheep to harvest the crops. They're needed for protection. That's why sons were so valuable. How do you tell him? I, I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, did Elkahana just say, okay, go ahead? Maybe she, he understood her vow. And I think that was the key, that he understood the vow was a serious thing. And had to be done. When you're in the midst of trouble, when you're in the midst of chaos, when you're down and depressed, when you feel like you can't go on, God is there with you. And God wants to love you and hold your hand and hold you tight as you go through the storm of life as you go through the chaos and the trouble. God wants to be with you and love you and grant you peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be with us and bless us. Strengthen us that we may be your children, that we may be comforted in our sorrow. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.